We are here with Christian Koshman, and I am from Istanbul. Christian is right now in Madrid, and uh, we are with people all around the world, so it's nice to see everybody. Christian, I, I like him very much. He's a nice guy. He's a very inspiration for us. And uh, the, I would like to tell you some facts about Christian. One of them is he's been, he's the sixth generation dentist, which is amazing, man. And it's been on Guinness World of Records. So imagine six generations of dentists for approximately 170 years. Yeah, is that correct? 170, yeah. 170 years, that's perfect, that's perfect. So, and it's official in the Guinness World of Records. So Christian graduated from the University of Sao Paulo in uh, 95 as a technician. Then, if I don't, if I know correctly, 2002 as a dentist. So he's both a technician and a dentist, which is perfect. You know, sometimes the technician says, the dentist doesn't understand me. Then the dentist says the technician doesn't understand me. Christian understands everybody and he can tell us, wow, he can tell <laughs> us what the technician needs and what the dentist needs. That is perfect. <laughs> I try, I try. Yeah, and later on, on 2004, he joined the Garber and Salama brothers with the team Atlanta and, go, and he, he worked there as four years as a chief technician, head technician, and then he worked with the leaders all around the world, with nice dentists. And now he's also the only member who's the American Academy, European Academy, and Brazilian Academy all together. He's a member of it. It's great to have you here, you know? Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my friend. Thanks for the kind introduction. Thank you. Thank, thanks for CAPP for organizing this. Uh, Thanks to everybody that joined us um, to, to watch us. I hope we can talk about some useful uh, topics and, and give some good insights in a, in a tough moment for, for our planet, a uh, tough moment for our profession, but we are doing our best to stay positive and to use time uh, in a smart way. So it is true. It's a pleasure to be here. It is true. So. It's good to have you here. Well, let's start with my first question. As you all know, when this happened, we had closed our offices and all of us, we became depressed, yeah? Including me, I was, I was like in depression for two days. Then I, I started watching your series. I started watching lots of webinars. I started improving myself. So I would like to ask you, please, what do you recommend as a dentist? How will this affect dentistry and what can we do to survive, please? Hmm. What, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's the, the the that's the most important question we are all asking ourselves. I think um, there's no way uh, you know there's no way we can uh, answer this question without really uh, understanding that we need to take advantage of this time to improve as a person as a human being uh, because. Uh, unfortunately things are completely out of control there's uh nothing is certain uh, our leaders and authorities cannot give us straight answers because they don't know as well uh we know absolutely everything can happen so um the only thing we can actually do is to accept the fact that things are out of control yeah uh, accept the fact that uh, uh maybe tough tough things will happen in terms of our business uh, that we may be harmed or hit by this crisis um, in, in a bigger way or smaller way. So understanding that things are out of control, we start to uh, really focus on the things that we have control and mainly the thing, the one thing that we have absolute control is to invest in ourselves and take advantage of this moment to become a better human being, to become a better person, and also to become a better dentist. That's true, yeah. I think, I think that this moment is a moment that we need to uh, focus basically on two things, um, on our health and on our relationship. But uh, of course, this can be seen as a philosophical thing, uh, invest on health and relationships, and that is right. Uh, because these are the two things that really matter, actually, in life. Uh, 
to be happy, you need health and you need relationships. Uh, but also it's a very smart thing when it comes to business because regardless of what happens, uh, even if the worst happens in terms of business, meaning we don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if my company was in three months. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, dentist uh, office owners don't know if they will be able to survive, if they will be able to stay open, uh, how this will hit them financially. We just don't know. We really believe that uh, this will be over and uh, we, most of the people will financially survive, hopefully. But the fact is that we don't know. Yeah, that's so true. If, if we don't know uh, what is going to happen financially, what we need to do is to prepare ourselves as a professional uh, to succeed regardless of what happens. And it, even if the worst happens means we get really hit and, and we need to, to close our or we need to look for a sec, uh, another option uh, we need to start from scratch. We need to look for a different uh, job. Uh, we need to partner up with, uh, with different colleagues to get together and find a solution. I don't know what may have to happen to increase your chances of succeeding in this near future. You're going to need your health and you're going to need your relationships. I so agree. that's why these are the two best investments. Um, uh, health, I mean uh, physical health and mental health. Uh, becoming uh, stronger physically and becoming stronger mentally, probably the best thing we can do because we will be able to face whatever situation we will have to face as leaders, as business owners, uh, as professionals. We need to strengthen our mental health, strengthen our physical health. That's true. And and the other thing that we're going to need is to activate our contacts, our relationships. So, uh, of course, we, can, we start with uh, family and friends because these are the moments that we need family and friends more than ever. Yeah. But even on a professional environment, strengthening our relationships means, for example, strengthen, strengthening your relationships with your existing patients, keeping the relationship, showing care, creating or staying connected, generating useful uh, content for them. Um, you know, keeping things rolling even though we are not seeing our patients, but show that you are ready, that you are working hard to be ready as soon as possible for them. Uh, improving your relationships with your suppliers, with your companies, with your landlord, with, your, with people that you owe money, uh, with the bank, with uh, your account manager, with uh, 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 people that provide uh, education, uh, with your colleagues, um, you know, with your community. Just yeah. invest on your relationships because regardless of what is going to happen, the better your relationships are, the bigger your chances to succeed no matter what happens. It's true, yeah, it's true. Like I, I told you about it. right now, the place I'm sitting is my new dental clinic and it stayed only open for one day. Can you imagine that, you know, I made this place for six months. It's nice. I was ready for it. It's my second dental clinic, actually. My first one, I've, I've been working for 20 years. This was like my baby. I, it, took, it stayed only open for one day. And I was like, come on. The first day I was in depression, second day depression. You know yeah. what I did after that? After that, I start every day. Turkey is only locked down on the weekends right now. Every day I shave. I dress up, I come to my clinic, no patients. I just, you know, open the computer, read some articles, read some publishers, and I see how, what can I do to improve myself? I look back and said, what have we done right? What have I done wrong? You know, I try to look at myself, yeah. see what I've done wrong. And for the future, this is going to end. So for the future, also, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to understand what have we done wrong. And one more thing, you know, you are a big, you teach all the world about the digital DSD concept. What is the DSD concept? You will tell me about it. We, we, it is the digital smile design concept. But one thing I would like to tell all the participants, we have to minimize the chair time of the patients. That's a must for us. You know, the less they stay, it's good for us. Yeah. So 
if we plan ahead, if we plan everything ahead, let's say the patient stays half the time in the chair because of your, your concepts and other, other different concepts, it's nice for us. So what, what do you think about that? Tell me about us, please. What do you think about, tell us about the first, the basics of the DSP concept and what can we do to minimize our chair time? Yeah, first, first of all, you, you, you're explaining your, uh, your situation with your clinic. You know, that's exactly the attitude that we need because you need to, uh, you cannot allow yourself to get into this situation where you get angry with the situation, where yeah. you, you, you want to blame somebody, you want to blame something for this because it's unfair. The feeling of this crisis is unfair is a very bad feeling that will not help you, you know, and it feels unfair. Uh, I had a similar situation to you. We have our new office in Madrid. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful. Yeah. Yes, the cutting center, yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. We just, yeah. Opened, we just opened the new office. We invested a lot of money to put the office together with an auditorium, yeah. with a new lab, with um, everything the way we wanted to do. And we opened the new office a uh, few weeks before the lockdown. Wow. Everybody was there and then the lockdown came and um, once in a while, a few days a week, I also like to go there just to walk in and, and do similar to what you're doing, you know, uh, and not allow myself to be angry or to blame, to try to find who is guilty or, or really have a negative feeling. We, yeah. Uh, we just have to get over that and uh, understand that it's out of the control. Let's do what we can do to increase the chances of success after this mess is over. So you're right. One of the things that a dentists need to understand is what are the strategies? Because we're going to go back into business, of course. Uh, at one point, you know, governments will tell us you can go back to work. Uh, and people will go back to the streets. And uh, of course, things will not be the same. So we need to understand uh, how to stay relevant when we go back, how to increase the chances of uh, creating some income and paying our bills and slowly growing back into what we used to have. And to do that, we need to understand what is going to change. What, one thing you mentioned, uh, we need to be more efficient. For sure, we need to be more efficient because uh, dental procedures generate fear because people feel like uh, they can be contaminated during the procedure. So the dentists that are investing in uh, solutions, in uh, procedures, in technologies, in uh, systems yeah. to be more efficient, during the chair side time, uh, combining procedures, shrinking the treatment, uh, doing as much as we can outside, planning things to be more efficient in the mouth. All the things that we are, we've been actually teaching and speaking about on the DSD course are now more relevant than ever. Yeah. Uh, we know that crisis usually speed up the changes that are already in place. So um, most of the things that we're gonna see happening and will be important on the next uh, year are things that we are, were already seeing as important before the crisis. The crisis is just speeding up the process of making this necessary faster. So uh, uh, all the solutions that we've been talking about, not only with digital dentistry, but patient experience, and now we can add on top of it, a very important new thing that dental, dental office owners will have to become experts that is biosafety. So awesome. this is a topic that uh, dentistry in general has kind of neglected a little bit. Uh, awesome. You know, we were not, uh, I believe, paying attention or showing our patients how much we care about uh, yeah. and, and we were not, specializing ourselves enough on the basic rules of biosafety and this is going to become mandatory uh, at the beginning we're going to have to adapt we're going to have to retrain our staff we're going to have to maybe make some cha physical changes in our office invest in some remodeling maybe uh, invest on some new equipments to increase 
uh, the quality of biosafety. But this is going to be key because patients will want to feel safe. Patients will make the tough questions. Uh, and the ones that will be one step ahead on this topic will make their patients feel more safe. And with that, patients will want to come back. It's true, yeah. Actually, when I was listening to some lectures, at first they said, after this crisis is over, people will not have money. And because they don't have money, they will, they will not ask for cosmetic veneers, smile design. But then I talked to other, some other people. Some people think they're different. They say, what life live it? And they will think, what have I not done? My teeth. Okay, I have some money, I will do my teeth. Because who never know? You don't know if you're going to die tomorrow or not. So some people think it won't be as bad as we think, you know? Like I have patients calling me, they're saying, doctor, please make an exception for me. Come and open your clinic, do my smile design, whatever, you know? So it's interesting how the way people think. So what do you think about that? Do you think people will have the same spending habits? Or the rich is always rich, the poor is always poor. What do you think about it? Yeah, I've been hearing the same kind of contradictions as well on comments. Um, um, some, you know, I think that uh, the high end, uh, the luxury world, the, the, the luxury world, the rich world, yeah. uh, you know, we see that on crisis, uh, on recession moments in history, yeah. uh, people with a lot of money, they didn't uh, stop. They didn't spend less money with the things that make them happy. Yeah. Now, of course, we understand that uh, probably we will go through a recession moment. So like in 2008, 2009, you know, the average dentist suffered because the average had less money. Yeah. And they were postponing things that were not uh, vital, that were not essential. So, uh, yes, I believe that uh, uh, besides the top, the tip of the pyramid, meaning the few doctors that are taking care of the very rich people yes. that will probably un uh, feel less, uh, the second layer. Uh, of, of dental offices will probably suffer uh, uh, a little bit like in every recession. Yes. Uh, it doesn't mean that people will not want at all to rehabilitate their smile, but I believe that uh, people will tend to postpone a little bit the beginning. Yeah. So, and people will be trying to look and compare dental offices and, and maybe will be a moment with, of reflection where patients will say, maybe I should look for a, a, a dentist that cares more about what really matters. Yeah. So in every crisis, we say, you know, every crisis has it, it winners, is winners. Absolutely. So we need to understand how to increase the chances for my dental office to be among the winners after this uh, crisis. So how can we increase? Let's say it's, tell us about it, please. Yeah. You, you asked your questions. How can we increase the chances? What kind of situation shall we put us? You know, you said, shall we aim for the luxury group? Shall we aim for the middle group? What shall we do as a dentist? Please tell us. Yeah, and, and, uh, unfortunately, most of the things that will increase our chances to succeed as a dental office owner, we should have been doing already before the crisis. Yes, that's true. So uh, now in a desperate mode, we can go after things and do things. Uh, and it's going to take a while to, to be able to be that modern dental office. You know, um, I, I believe that the, there are a couple of things that we need to do as dental office owners. The first thing, become experts on office, uh, office management, financial management, team management. Uh, leadership, uh, professionalize our, uh, the business side of our office. So the offices that were already more professional on the business side before the crisis, of course, they have a bigger chance to succeed after the crisis. Now, if you were not investing much time on that or energy, this is the moment you have to do that right now, right? Not only uh, you have to uh, be very efficient on the emer emergency financial strategies for the next three months, uh, but also understand what on the, the next six months 
in terms of um, thinking outside the box to grow a little bit your income on things that maybe were not your main things before. I believe that as we go back to work, uh, we're going to have uh, two very specific moments as we grow back. We're going to have a moment that is emergency moment, meaning do whatever you can to generate any type of income, trying as much as you can to break even, yeah. you know, to survive, uh, negotiate payments, uh, and create new revenue streams, you know, do whatever you can to make some money here and spend as little bit as possible there. But this is the challenge, spend as little that you can, but at the same time, investing on key factors to prepare yourself to be different right around the corner. So it's a, it's a challenging moment. That's when, that's why people say that crisis really generate opportunities because you need to be very, very smart about where you're going to stop spending money and where you're going to continue to, to, to invest because yeah. some things that you need to invest are key for you to survive. If you stop in time, if you are completely shut down in terms of strategies, if you, uh, if you want to just save money, save money, save money, uh, you will maybe survive one or two months, three months, but then other people will become better and more efficient and more different in the eyes of the consumer. And in six months to one year, you're going to go obsolete or you're going to become irrelevant and yes. then you have a problem. So that is number one. You, a dental office owner, more than ever needs to become a very good business owner, strategically and financially. That's number one. Number two is biosafety. So uh, we understand that biosafety will play a very, very important role on making dentists successful. Yes. Because, uh, uh, because mentally for the patients will be very, very important. So when patients come back to your office, they will have to feel safe. And this is not, I'm not talking about the technical part yeah. of being biosafe, but I'm talking about the emotional side, you know, sure. how can you send a message to your customer that you did your homework, that you are above the average that you are completely following the rules, that your staff is trained, that is ultra safe to go to your office. That's so good. the biosafety strategy means that now we need to invest on uh, being in contact with our team, uh, learning from everything that is out there, what is really necessary, what are the new protocols. Mm -hmm. Actually, first of, even before that, we need to go back to the basics of biosafety Yes. Uh, and things that were supposed to be our rules three months ago yeah. and review all of them and understand what we were not doing before and first implement very well the basics of biosafety and then learning what are the new protocols because of this specific virus, train the staff and invest the minimum possible uh, money on creating the structure to be a, an example, a golden standard on biosafety. That's true. Yeah. So that's number two. And then number three, number three is the marketing side, yeah. is the awareness. So we need to not only become golden standard on biosafety, but we need to learn how to advertise and show to our community, to our existing patients before even new patients, that we are golden standard biosafety, that we are a modern dental office, that we have very cool new offerings, that uh, we understand that patients may have less money for the next six months, but we can do this, this, and this, and this. What do you mean by offering? Can you, can you open that please? Like, uh, oh, is it offering a promotion? Or is it offering uh, something, new concept? What is it please? Offering can be anything that uh, you provide to your patients in a different way than you used to. So, uh, of course, that uh, for the last 10 years, yes, the last decade was amazing for the uh, Western capitalist uh, world. 
not in not only West, but that. every every capitalist world, materialist world, uh, con was in a growth pattern for ten years. Yes, uh, and that was was amazing because we don't see that happening many times in history. Ten years of continuous growth of yes. most of the countries worldwide, right? So. Okay. That generated a very positive feeling on everybody. That's why this crisis is hitting us so hard because yeah. we were all in average in such a great mood for 10 years, growth, growth, growth. Uh, the consumers were spending more and more and more. Uh, cosmetics was growing, growing, growing. Uh, yeah. Everybody was feeling happy and comfortable. Social media was exploding. Uh, yeah. Dentistry was all over. Uh, uh, dentists were investing on cool on cool offices, uh, cool marketing strategies, uh, invest on your smile. The smile was the biggest trend and everybody was on that move. Yes. So suddenly the crisis comes and hits, hits us. And that's why we feel, uh, as we mentioned, so angry with this crisis. I was about to really explode. I was about to make the big move. You know, I invested so much. This was the mo moment. And, and then suddenly this happens. So we need to understand that we are a society in general are in this new mood. And uh, if we just tell our patients the same speech, you know, of three right. months ago, six months ago, maybe that's not gonna be enough. So new right. offerings means uh, maybe going back to basics, for example, basics, basic dental care will always be essential, right? Yeah. Dealing with pain, dealing with emergencies, of course, but dealing with pain, dealing with chronic pain, dealing with uh, functional issues, uh, dealing with systemic issues, uh, and dentists can play a very, very important role in that. Dealing with uh, uh, sleep disorders, you know, uh, everything that harms the quality of living directly, you know. Uh, of course, we know that having a beautiful smile and, and investing on a better smile plays an important role in anybody's life. But uh, there are things that are even more essential than that. And we need to be back and, and provide this. You know, if our marketing strategy was all about selling 10 veneers, we yeah. need to probably adapt a little bit our marketing strategy into other things that will make patients feel comfortable and safe and have and right uh, so the systemic connection the functional connection chronic uh, chronic pain uh, functional disorders uh, sleep disorders um, simple treatments as well minimally invasive treatments that generate the psychological feeling of less chances of cross contamination you know uh, aligners of course is something that uh, was already growing and is going to grow even faster because it's a very, it's a non-invasive treatment. So everything that is non-invasive. Uh, smile makeovers with direct composite with technology, you know, injected composite techniques, uh, plus aligners, you know, uh, and above all, prevention. Prevention is, prevention is probably the best thing that a dentist can do for a human being. And, and prevention was kind of secondary. Everybody was talking about full mouth rehabilitation. Uh, doing unnecessary treatments many times, you know, just as a luxury thing, just as a non-essential, uh, not, not essential uh, investment. And yes. suddenly we need to go back into uh, the basics, back to what really matters, back to how a dentist can help the society, help a human being to have a better quality of living. So uh, these are the offerings. The offerings means not only the, the, clinical offering, but also the message, the marketing, and the awareness combined. That's, that's great. That's great. Thank you. You know, let's get into your, everything is your subject, by the way. You know, I was, I was going to say, let's get into your subject, but you're a great reader, right? You read all the time. You improve yourself all the time, which I like about you. That's very nice. Let's get into, one, shortly the DSD concepts. And number two, like, I like giving courses on veneers, yeah? And everybody tells me, I live in a small town. I don't have a nice technician here. What can I do? I, I, right now, what I say, the world is getting so small. Yeah, I live in Istanbul. 
you have the planning center in Madrid. I just make the scan, I take the photos, I download them. And, you know, can you talk about the workflows? How does it go? And what is the DST concept, please? You know, how can I, from Istanbul, or I see many friends there from Serbia, Dubai, Doha, I'm reading them. Hello, guys. Hello, everybody from Italy. Hi. So how can we, as dentists from all over the part of the world, with you guys, you know, let's say I don't have a nice lab near me. Mm -hmm. What is the simple workflow? I know you can talk about this for days, but, you know, let's talk about it for like a, some time. What do you think? Tell us a little bit about DST and how can I work with you, mm -hmm. or with you guys, actually? Perfect. Perfect. Let's definitely talk about that. Oh, so just one more thing, sorry. I know in your team, you don't only have dentists, you have like engineers, designers, which is perfect for us, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. please. Yeah, uh, and I'm looking at the chat here. You're right, there's people from all over. So I want oh, to yeah. thank everybody we have. Yeah, as you said, Dubai, New Zealand, Doha, uh, Serbia, Kuwait. Uh, um, we have Saudi Arabia. Yeah. That's very, very, very cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> so let's go to your question. Um, yes, the world is small and... Uh, Today, it's all about uh, having internet. You can be in the countryside, you can yeah. be in the middle of nowhere. And yes. if you have uh, an internet connection, you are like the same doctor that has an office in the middle of Manhattan. The same solutions, the same possibilities. Um, uh, it's very important to understand that the, 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 the modern dental world, the modern dental world in, uh, involves uh, a couple of new standards in dentistry. Of course, that being a good dentist is the starting point. There's no way we can skip that. Okay? That's mandatory. That's an obligation. So uh, there's no way these new strategies will make the magic of transforming a bad dentist into a good dentist. Yeah. So first step is to be dentist and to be a great dentist you need to study the basics not digital not marketing not management not patient experience you need to study dentistry biology function structure aesthetic principles interdisciplinary treatment planning diagnostics the basics then after you know the information you need to practice you need to repeat you need to do over and over and over again. There's no way you can be a master in one, two, three years of practice. And I see that happening on social media all the time. You know, people post a couple of cute, uh, cool photos. I'm a master. No, yeah. you're not a master. You need to repeat a thousand times, 10,000 times, the same prep, the same impression, the same surgery, the same implant placement, repeat, 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 and repeat. Now you have the know-how, you have the expertise, you are a good dentist. Now you can start thinking about how to become a good modern dentist, or even better, a good modern dental office owner that is different than being a good dentist. Now, yes. so if you want to own a good office, a successful office, besides being a good dentist, or besides hiring good dentists, because if you're not a good dentist, you can still have a great business, you just need to hire good dentists, and you can become the manager of good dentist, right? There's many different roles in the dental office. So uh, if you have good dentists doing the clinical work, then you need to invest on professional business management, professional marketing, uh, professional customer support, right? And invest on digital workflows. Yes. Invest on digital workflows. You need to do that because otherwise in one, two, three years, competition will just get stronger, more difficult, and it's gonna be more difficult to survive. Can you survive as a dental office owner without digital technology? Yes, you can, but the chances right. are just a little bit smaller. It's just a little harder. It's all about probabilities. It's chances in life. You know, people say, can I do good dentistry without having a scanner? Of course you can. We've been doing great dentistry for 50 years without a scanner. That's true. Can I can I uh, can I deliver great treatments with uh, digital technology? Of course we can. We yes. cannot deny what we did. It's a matter of probabilities. Is increasing your chances by increasing competitivity, by uh, uh, 
creating inferentials that patients will say, wow, this is cool, I wanna come back. So it's all about smart, smart strategy. So DSD is all about this. DSD yeah. is after you are a good dentist, what are the things that you need to learn to become a great dental office owner? Yes. So we teach the topics to make good dentists become good owners, successful. Yes. You know, have happy patients and a healthy financial dental office. When it comes to digital specifically, digital dentistry specifically, as you said, yes, dentists shouldn't be afraid of digital dentistry uh, because it's not on the dentist. It's on the dental lab. It's on what we call the digital lab and the digital planning center and the digital companies. If yes. you want to be a digital dentist, you don't need to learn digital and you don't need to buy digital, meaning learn how to operate the software, buy the software and buy the machines and operate them. No, you need to outsource, outsource everything. That's true. You need to understand the philosophy. You need to understand the concept of digital dentistry. You, you need to understand the processes. You need to understand the workflows, but you don't need to understand the technicality of each software because other people need to do everything for you. You as a dentist, you need to do dentistry. You need to see patients. You need to do clinical work. You need to run your office, right? All you need to do is to write, to find the partners, find the right partners, three partners, digital companies, yeah. real, comp real digital companies, real digital labs, and real digital planning centers. These are the three partners that you need. And even better, a fourth, real digital marketing agencies. So, well, well, I have to ask you something. Who, who, who do we ask for digital marketing? And what, what sources can we use for marketing, actually, and for business development? Could you tell us, like, that it's really slow and we can carry on with the DSD concept? Because you guys, you talk about the DSD, but the marketing side, you don't talk too much, yeah? What do you recommend for that? On the, on the DSD course, we talk a lot about marketing. So the yeah. DSD course, the DSD concept talks about five topics, the yes. course, right? Uh, it's five pillars. Yes. Uh, focused on, on, on achieving two main goals. Let's start with the goals. Actually, the DSD concept and the DSD course yes. has two main goals. To help the dentist be more efficient. Yes. And more different. Meaning efficiency and differentiation. Yes. That efficiency and differentiation are the two shortcuts to success. Are the two main concepts to succeed any yeah. business by the way not only dental offices any business more than ever now with this crisis should focus on efficiency and differentiation so the dsd course teaches how to use technology and communication these are the two tools yes technology and communication are the two most powerful tools that every business owner should invest yes technology and Communication, improving communication systems and implementing technology. Why do we use these two tools? We use these two tools to achieve the two main goals, efficiency and differentiation. Now, when you bring this to dentistry, we separate the DSD course into five concepts, into five pillars. Yes. How to be more efficient and different in the eyes of the consumer when it comes to beautiful, the, creating beautiful smiles. Yeah. Smile design is pillar number one. How to be efficient and different on diagnostics and treatment planning. How to be efficient and different when presenting the plan and creating case acceptance. Emotional dentistry, yeah? Emotional dentistry. Yeah. How to be efficient and different when treating the patient clinically. Clinical performance, digital dentistry. Yes. And how to be efficient and different on promotion, awareness, word of mouth, digital marketing. That's true, yeah. Very so nice. Five. That's why DSD we call design, plan, present, perform, and promote. These are the five pillars of DSD. And this is what we teach on our uh, DSD online education. All, the, all the, the DSD courses are available online now. You can, you can do the whole DSD residency online now. now or the in-person courses that we have that we call DSD residency as well. So these are the five pillars. That's true. That's very nice. So I've, I've done the courses. I've done everything. 
I recommend you guys to do it also. It's very nice. And one more thing about digital dentistry. You say, how do we become a good dentist? How do we become a good technician? Whatever, yeah? When you are using digital dentistry, you have the libraries, the two forms, already inside the software. So you, don't have, you have to be a good technician, but you don't have to be a great technician, you know, because you already have information planted there. It helps us a lot, you know? Uh, so that, I also like using the, the, the libraries and everything. But I recommend you dentists out there. They say, I bought the ShareSite system, and I'm doing one crown for 20 euros. I, I'm, you know, I buy the block, and I see the guys, they sit in front of the computer for like two hours. They design one crown and two hours. I say, for 20 euros, you sat two hours in front of the computer. Come on, man, you know? You just scan, and you send it to the guys who can do it. If you don't have it in your city, send it to the SD planning center, send it to somewhere else. But don't do it yourself, you know? Your time is very valuable. Invest in something else. That's what I say. What do you think? Exactly. That's completely true. This is, uh, this, what you're saying, what you're just analyzing is what a good business owner analyzes. Yeah. Dentists, we as dentists, unfortunately, we don't have that business mind, that management mind. So uh, every time you're doing something with your time, you should be asking, uh, is this the best usage of my time? You know, you need to invest on uh, processes to take better advantage of your time. So when you buy a new system, you need to make the analysis. This is like creating a new business. It's a business model. You need yeah. to understand uh, how much time you're going to spend, how much resources you're going to spend, how much you're going to charge, to build the price and to understand how much you're going to charge the patient, this is a process that every smart company does a very in-depth analysis about how to charge a certain amount for a product. And, and dentists many times, they're just like, ah, I'm going to charge this, you know? Yeah. And as you said, uh, they spend two hours in front of the computer, then they, they are not very familiar with the machine, so they spend more uh, one hour maintaining and setting the machine, then they spend one hour calling somebody to help them to reset the machine and the technology and then yeah. the the technology is sitting there underutilized so all these things you should put on the paper and do the math to That's realize it. that at the end you're doing very little per hour with your time and that is not smart so you need to ask yourself how can you make more with your time it's true yeah and what i realize normally they design something and they do it it looks like a sugar cube it doesn't look like to starting white, you know? And they say, oh, look, I've done a perfect job. They, they posted on the internet, you know, everything like that. Normally, if that job came from the technician, you'd say, come on, what kind of thing is this, you know? But when they do it themselves, they're like, wow, look. I, look, I say it looks like a sugar cube or it looks something white, mm -hmm. nothing, you know? So I believe and you believe everything, you should do your work, you know? If you're professional in preparing the team, you should do it. The designing and planning, the other person should do it. I agree, yeah. And yeah, one, more thing, one more thing, for a DST, for, to work with the concept, of course we need a scanner. What else do we need to work with you guys? You know, what do you recommend? Like, do you recommend so, buying from, a CBTC or something? The first, you know, before buying anything, before yeah. buying absolutely anything, the first step for me, if I was a, a, a dentist uh, uh, with a young dentist or starting my office now, Yes. Or, or already, I already have my office, but I, I really want to, to become a modern office. I really want to be more protected against the future, right? Yes. Uh, uh, be more relevant so my business has a bigger chance to, to survive. Uh, you know, the first thing before buying anything, because that's also a problem. We get excited with something, we go there and buy. Yeah. Before buying, you need to have a strategy to take advantage of your purchase before you need yeah. to really make a strategy about anything if you're going to do a course on how to do better veneers yes. before you invest on that course you need to have a strategy how can i get the return on my investment on that course i'm just going to do the course and then come back and realize no 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 you know every investment matters and you need to be smart about your investments so you need to analyze how to take advantage of every investment, every equipment that you buy, every course that you do, every system that you want to implement, every person that you hire, 
everything needs to have a strategy behind. And the strategy needs to be how to be more efficient, how to be different, and how to get my return on the investment. If I'm paying 100 for this, yeah. in one year, I want to have 200 back. It's true. Because if I don't have a strategy to have 200 back, it's better not to buy that thing. So, I, have, I have a question for you. Let's say a business voice, you pay 100 for the employee. How much do you think we should get back from that employee? Just a question. That, that's for, for the employee, I, you need, that's a very broad question because we need to understand what this employee will be doing in your office. What exactly is the role of that employee? You know, yeah. And then you need to understand the impact of what they, they will be doing. So first you need to understand how you're going to have to train that employee to perform the way you want. So if you don't have the training uh, systems in place, it's better not to hire that employee. Then you need to understand that with that training, they're going to perform X, Y, Z. And with X, Y, Z, you're going to probably make this amount of money. So yes. you can pay their salary, plus you can have some extra to make sense having that employee. So yes. if you talk to business people, you know, uh, and I'm learning with them as well. If you yeah. talk with business people, they have the right, they know how to do that. They've been doing this forever. It's, what I'm yeah. saying is not something new. It's, it's what is around, you know, we need support from professional business management to make strategic decisions. So when it comes to digital, the, your, your question, first thing, don't buy anything if you don't have a strategy for your return on investment. How do you create strategies? How do you create smart strategies? Learning to think the process, understanding the big picture. This is what we try to teach on the DSD course. Before you become a digital dentist, understands what is the meaning of having a digital office. What means implementing the full idea? Because once you understand the big picture, and this is something the dentist needs to learn, the big yes. picture, the strategy, the process. Then, once you understand that, the only thing that you really need to buy is yes. a scanner, is the intraoral scanner. Because as I said, everything else needs to be outsourced. So if you understand the big picture and yes. you have a scanner, you don't need to know anything else. You need to start doing, using smartly your scanner and yes. you need to find your partners. What partners? Companies that are giving real digital support, yes. real digital labs, real digital planning centers, and real smart marketing agencies to help you promote to your community that you're doing that. Okay, yeah, I agree. So there's some questions for the people. I would like to ask you that, please. One of them is about biosafety, actually. Asking me, asking us, asking you, actually, what different equipment can we invest? You know, we see lots of stuff. We see some suction devices. What do you think we should invest? And also, I see in the internet, they make this like thing around the patient. It looks cool, but of course, you, you can't reach in there. What can, what can we invest in? What do you think? I think that uh, on the biosafety thing, of course, everybody's freaking out now. Everybody's going yeah. wild and crazy. And, and uh, we are working with a, a committee of experts on the topic to really find answers because yes. what you see now, it's an overwhelming amount of information online telling you need to do this, you need to do that. Now, we, this is the way. This, and, and, and creating protocols and suggestions that are completely unrealistic, that are uh, not feasible, not technically feasible and not financially feasible, you know, yeah. so don't go crazy uh, with everything that is showing online. Talking to real experts that understand what is going on, they say, of course, this uh, virus is making us worry much more about biosafety. But the main thing that we need to do is to do very well what we were already supposed to do before this. Yes because there are much more dangerous viruses and bugs out there than this one that were already there yeah. threatening dentists. You know, there's a list of things that can happen with the dentist if we don't do proper, and we survived, and we, we, are, we were fine. We were doing a decent job before. All we need to do is to reemphasize the basic rules of 
we believe that a couple of additions, a couple of extra things will be necessary. And in the middle of the pandemic, we need to just improve a little bit more with some extra cautious actions, right? But nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Just follow the basics of biosafety. And, and, and definitely uh, uh, increasing the quality of your suction is definitely one thing that uh, will become uh, 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 a basic rule. Creating uh, distancing in the office, people yeah. in the office, on the waiting room, you know, the waiting room with the front desk, you know, creating that distance and, yes. and basic steps that we will see are not that crazy, are not that impossible to be done. But don't go wild, don't worry. All we need to do is to follow the basic rules of biosafety that we already learned before this crisis. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. And uh, give us some take home messages, please. You know, we have the last five minutes. You have the stage. What, what take, give us some messages, please. Yeah, what do you think, Christian? As I said, you know, uh, it's a tough moment. Admit that, don't try to pretend it's not. That doesn't help, you know. Some people are, oh, I'm positive, this is okay. No, it's not okay, it's tough. Yeah. It's bad. And one of the best ways to become positive in a good, a good positive is to admit that what is happening is really happening. Yes. It's tough, it's serious, and we're going to get hit by yes. very badly, probably. And that's the reality. Done. Put that reality aside and now be positive about it. You know? Use your time in a smart way. Invest on what really matters. Become a better person. As I said, invest on your health, invest on your relationships. Yes. And then with the extra time, if you are a business owner, if you are an office owner, think like a leader. This is the moment where leaders will prepare their future success. In one or two or three years, I can guarantee to you that in one, two or three years, we're going to look back and we're going to see several leaders preparing themselves to succeed. Yes. So be a leader, be a leader for your team, be a leader for your family, and prepare yourself as a human being to become a better human being, to become a better business owner, and then prepare your office to fulfill these three areas that I mentioned. I agree, yeah. Financial strategies, golden standard biosafety, and very high quality awareness marketing to your community. Customer support, relationship, word of mouth, about how good, how well prepared you are as, a, as an office owner, and that your doors will be open, and you're safe and you're ready to see your patients back and to treat them and to deliver to them one of the most important things in life. Yes. A healthy and confident smile. That's true. That's true. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, there's one more question that people ask me and they say about biosafety. What do you think about digital dentistry? When we are doing digital dentistry, it makes us more biosafe rather than the Impressions, what do you think about that they're asking? That's our last question from the audience. Of course, that digital dentistry is not the solution to be biosafe, but digital dentistry does help. Uh, it, it is one extra thing that helps, even psychology for the patient. One example is uh, just the comparison between an impression with the scanner and a regular impression uh, and, and the risks that both are bringing. You make, you make an impression with the scanner and after you're done, all you need to do is to clean the tip. If the tip is disposable, even better. So yeah. scanners that have disposable tips, even better. You know, you, you throw that out, you put a new one in yeah. the right way, you clean your screen and the file now is virtual. The lab is gonna work virtually, right? Yeah. And everything is, is much safer. If you compare this with an impression with all the saliva and the blood and the mass and the cleaning process, putting in a package, 
going to the lab, going yes. back. So that's one example why uh, going digital will be uh, also good for biosafety. Very nice. Good. Thank you, Christian. You know, I really enjoyed this conversation. In the future, we could do some courses online. Let's see. I don't know. Cap, we talk about it. And so it's great to have you here, my friend. You know, good to see you. And I hope to visit you in Madrid when things are over. Huh? Come to the DSD Planning Center. Definitely. You should come visit us. As I said, the, the new office is beautiful. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, the doors will be open um, pretty soon. We're going to go back to our in-person courses over there. We, we, of course, had to cancel the courses in March, April, May, uh, and, and June. But starting in July, uh, we believe that uh, our in-person courses will be back. I want yeah. to invite everybody, everybody that to take a look online, on our content online. I'm very, very, very proud of the educational content that we have online. Uh, you, which website do you recommend for us? Digitalsmiledesign.com. Digitalsmiledesign.com. You go uh, 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 education, uh, DSD online, and you have a huge amount of, of, uh, of uh, educational content. And most of them, I humbly believe, are key to prepare us to succeed tomorrow. Yes, yes. And one more thing I would like to add. You guys have the DSD community Facebook page. And you have a few lectures there. It's just perfect. Guys, everybody, check those lectures. Those are perfect. The name is Coffee Break, but they're not Coffee Break. They're really nice lectures, you know? Yeah, we, we, on, uh, on Facebook, we have our page, the DSD community. DSD community page. You just search there. Yeah. Uh, it's a closed group, so you need to ask to be part of it. Everybody's approved. Uh, and we have every day amazing free content. Really very, very high quality uh, lectures clinical and technical lectures, but also strategic business, marketing, biosafety uh, lectures as well. So I invite everybody to join us for free, our DSD community Facebook page, yes. Okay, thank you, Christian. It was great to have you, you know. I hope to see you in real life, yeah? And Me too. One more thing from Christian. Everybody who attends this lecture, he will take out for lunch in Madrid, yeah? That's your promise. Just come. <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. Thank you. It's good to have you. Thank me. you very much.